Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report with myself, Free Gabrielle, and the king, Captain Rick Murphy, by my side. Rick, today is extra super special exciting because it is our 300th episode. 300 <laughs> episodes, Brie, I would have never thought. But you know what? We've got to thank the viewers. We've mm -hmm. got to thank our family, our friends, but especially we've got some special sponsors in the audience. Very special. And also someone who has been with us since the very beginning, Mr. Dave Farrell over at the CCA Workbench. That's right, man. <laughs> uh, look, look, I got a bobblehead too. Yay, Jay. Look at the jowls on that look guy. Look at the jowls on that thing. That's it's a very thing. accurate. 300. 300. 300 episodes, not 300 300 years, episodes of jowls. Episodes, yeah. <laughs> it just feels like 300 years, yeah, Dave. it feels like it. <laughs> All right. Well, Rick, before we get started, we want to acknowledge our official sponsor, Chevrolet, who has been with us since the show first began. Right. Look at this beautiful Chevrolet behind us. I'm looking There's at it. There's always something beautiful behind us back there. Yellow's mellow. <laughs> All right, but before we move on, we need to get to our king species tonight, which is the king species. Kingfish, you're absolutely <laughs> right, Bree. Let's take a look at the saltwater sportsman photos. Mm -hmm. Now the thing that you can think about the kingfish is nicknamed the smoker because when you first hook him up, he's gonna run 100 yards, 150 yards, and he's gonna smoke the line right off the reel. And if we take a look at the second set of dentures, look at the Whoa. teeth. They have razor teeth. You gotta certainly use wire leader whenever you're getting ready yeah. to catch one of these, Bree. And you'll hear a lot tonight about the stinger rig, and that's why, because of those teeth. Perfect, well, starting with our captain, who's king of the East region, one of the original captains from the very beginning, is also here with us in the studio tonight and definitely knows how to get this party started. Take it away, Mike. Well, you know, it's appropriate that we're doing it this week because late May and early June are the single best time of year to target kingfish in my region. The fish are spread out through all three counties, Martin, St. Lucie, and uh, Palm Beach County. And uh, the most consistent bites off Jupiter Inlet in 85 to 120 feet of water. But good numbers of fish will come off the Loran Tower Ledge and the Six Mile Reef. And then in Fort Pierce, the offshore bar is holding good numbers of fish. And if that wind clocks southwest, the fish charge the beach. So places like the Kingfish Hole off Hope Sound, the Doubles Condos off Fort Pierce, and the Vero Cove, they'll be producing smoker kings that'll win the tournaments over the next few weeks. Target those kings with live baits on number four wire stinger rigs, or the traditional three hook dead sardine Palm Beach monofilament kingfish rig. For live baits, a live blue runner, a goggle eye, a blue fish, that's gonna attract the largest fish, but Spanish sardines will get the numbers and outfish thread fins or pilchards two to one. In a pinch, you can also use mullet or menhaden and do very well. And the average king is gonna be 12 to 20 pounds. I got a photo there. That's Brittany Bost. She caught that big kingfish last week in 130 feet of water out of Stewart. All right, Mike, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Navionics from your region. We're talking about an area right off of Jupiter Inlet. Now, Mike, the one thing that you got to understand is we have all of these areas here off of the beach, and you have a steady bar there to 70 feet or so. But if we take a look at the next chart where we have the sonar uh, soundings by Navionics, you'll see where we have lots of holes. Now, these holes, guys, were actually made there by when they were dredging and real uh, filling the beach, putting the sand back up on the beach. If we look at the third chart, you'll see by the sonar live charts, you can actually see the significant drop off. And certainly Captain Mike says that right now and around those holes, because it congregates bait, as well as this drop off is where you're gonna find those big kingfish. What else do you have for us offshore, Mike? Well, the dolphin bite's been scattered, but consistent with good action on mostly schoolies in 85 to 150 feet of water and larger fish in 220 on out to, to 600 feet of water. South, uh, southeasterly winds are weak, have the weeds stacked up, so it's pretty easy to find good water to fish, and it seems like the best dolphin fishing always takes place in the rougher weather. With the wind and weeds, the best bet is to troll ballyhoo, either skirted or naked to cover the most water, or you can pull feathers or strip baits until you find the fish and then pitch out live baits. And you wanna be sure to put a little wire in front of the hook because that, you know, there should be some wahoo out there leading up to the full moon on Tuesday. Average dolphin's gonna be four to 12 pounds. All right, let's go in shore, bud. Well, you know, there's a couple days left to catch a snook before the season ends, and they have to be released until September. Snook are already starting to push into the inlets and along the beaches to feed on live juvenile pilchards, thread fins, and sardines that are schooling along their shorelines. I talked to Captain Ken Hudson. He had a great day of beach fishing for snook on Sunday. He was down in Hope Sound. He was catching about 30 fish uh, on live pilchards. 
And uh, the nighttime snook bite has also begun strong in the intercoastal waterway just north of Jupiter Inlet and in the Indian River at the Jensen Beach Causeway and in North Bridge and Fort Pierce. Live mullet or flare hawk jigs have been fooling the majority of fish. And don't overlook the Palm Beach County piers, which are producing really good snook action right now. Now first, the migrating tarpon schools are also working their way along the beaches. They're coming up the coast through all the counties in my region. Fish to 100 pounds or more being caught. June is the best tarpon month of the year with a stretch of water between Palm Beach Inlet and Jupiter Inlet producing good catches because of that clean water that makes it easier to spot fish. And then as the fish migrate up the coast, some of them will move inside the inlets and that'll build our summer resident uh, tarpon populations. You wanna target the fish on the beach with purple and black or chartreuse colored flies live thread fins, pilchards, crabs, or big swimming plugs like a Yozuri crystal minnow. And then around the inlets and inside, it's live mullet or small soft plastic, a big key, small soft plastics, like a, a four inch bass assassin shad with a quarter ounce uh, jig head and a mama's 14K or Houdini color. That'll get the, uh, the bites when you cast to the rolling fish. Average tarpon's gonna be 40 to 80 pounds. All right, Mike, every week we talk about bass fishing. Give it to me. Well, you know, I was talking to Captain Mike Shellen on Lake Okeechobee. He's telling me that the bass are pretty much done spawning and moved to those outside grass lines to chase the shad schools that are starting to form up for the summer. The north end of the lake around Kings Bar and the east end of the lake around the old JNS fish camp, they're holding good concentrations of fish. You want to start today throwing white spinner baits or shad colored topwater plugs or lipless crankbaits. That'll get you your school fish, then work the outside edges of the eelgrass beds. Big key, not Kissimmee grass, not hydrilla. Find the eelgrass beds, work uh, swim baits or fat jobs in that green pumpkin color. Uh, they're still producing fish to eight pounds on live shiners and the average uh, trips like 35 to 50 fish a morning. So the summertime patterns really kicked in on Lake Okeechobee, guys. All right, great report, Mike. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Dex and Docks Central uh, East region. Captain Mike says that we're gonna have inshore snook, snapper, and permit on the Juno Pier. Live shrimp, crabs, and pilchards or sardines are gonna work best for those snook. And then offshore, Mutton snapper, 75 feet of water on the Loran Tower ledge. Pilchard sardines, thread fins is the best action is gonna be at night, Bree. That was so cool having Mike here. You really? like that? Yeah, I think every week we should have a captain in the studio. Okay, what or do you every want? Other week. You will sit. Really I get. will get. Okay, now we're gonna drift on up to the Central East region where I will be joining Captain Jim Ross in just a few weeks. I hear the Kings are pretty good up there, Jim. Well, you know, Bree, you're right, and I can't wait for you to come up so that we can go try and catch a couple of them, hopefully. Yeah. But the king or kingfish is more commonly known in my region. It is the most targeted species in the Central East region uh, right now. The king, big kings are hitting live pogies or mullets that you can cast at, or you can also use filters and grainies that you can catch with a sabiki rig near the buoys or some of the offshore structures. Most of the time, we still control these baits on a wire sticker rig, like Mr. Rick mentioned at the beginning of the show. And we use number three or number four wire, or use 60 pound multi stranded cable and a pair of number four VMC 9626 treble hooks. These, those hooks are the 4X strong hooks, and you can land the kingfish to 40 or 50 pounds in some cases on those hooks. You just need to light enough drag to not bend the hooks out. Now, the fish will skyrocket out of the water, uh, as well as strip a bunch of lock off, like, like Rick was talking about in the beginning. And because those bigger fish do those things, and they're not quite as tasty as the smaller ones, they do taste better on a smoker as well. So if you're looking for them, look for them in the 60 to 90 foot depths right now throughout my entire region. Our average fish is probably going to run about 15 to 20 pounds, but we have 50 to 40 pounds around almost any time of the year. Now my second species is the tuna, and right now there's a variety of tuna out offshore. The guys are running over to the east side of the Gulf Stream primarily to catch the yellowfin tuna when the weather will allow. But there's also some blackfin and some skipjacks over there, you know, if you're willing to troll some smaller plugs for them. The best lure really, and you can argue this with just about anybody, but as far as effectiveness goes, a simple cedar plug will catch most tuna. But if you like to pull skirt or diving plugs, black and purple, red and black, or green and black combination on those lures just work really good. Well, for the birds, because they're going to be fishing, they're going to be fishing around the two that are striking on those baits, just like you're going to want to be doing. Now, our average, to make it right, the yellow set are about 40 pounds, the average black fin is running about 10 to 20, and the average gift jack is about half the size of the black fin. Now, Spence Wise sent me a picture the other day. He and his crew headed out of Fort Canaveral, 
and they they got a really nice 80 plus. The got right the last couple pass they left to get the season. Hey Jim, That's you got to be careful. I'm losing you on the here. phone, bub. You got to be careful. I'm losing you on the phone, so I don't know what you got to do, but stay still. All right, I'll try to do that, buddy. Okay, thanks. Now, our intro, our intro species is snook, and right now they're going to be closed on the first. But Crappy Glen Austin is catching good numbers right now around the mangrove uh, shorelines and spoil islands in the Indian River Lagoon. Now, you see these fish are pretty spooky, but if you throw a live bait up around those areas, you're going to find most of the snook are running into two to seven pound range. But there's some bigger fish out there. Captain Glenn has been free lining baits around those islands in particular. He has been getting some big dividend payoffs because he's been doing that. Uh, some of those fish are running up into the 30 pound range. Now, guys who are fishing in the surf around Patrick Air Force Base, uh, all the way down to Vero, are going to be able to catch them as well. And live filters or pinfish or croakers are generally the best, but you can also catch them off of soft plastic early and late in the day. Remember, the season's going to close on June 1st, and it's going to reopen on September 1st. And here's that picture I was talking about, Captain Glenn, with one of his uh, customers, Chris Cobb, with a beautiful Indian River snook. Man, what a great, last... great fish. Your phone is fine now, Jim. Keep going, buddy. Thank you so much. All right. All right, bud. Now, the last fish of the week is speckled trout. And it's been a fair some days and really slow on others. Uh, we haven't had a very consistent fight in the Indian River this this week on redfish or trout, and the Mosquito Lagoon and Banana River don't seem to be doing much better. However, if you get into a school of fish, you generally can find a pretty good bite. You just have to stick with it and kind of really grind through it right now. Rapple X Raps and Chad Raps that run real shallow seem to be working pretty good. And the best colors that I've been using this week are the Glass Ghost or the Olive Green. If you're in cleaner water or if you're in some of that really dirty water, the cloud cover color is working really well also. Saltwater assassin also makes two really good baits that imitate them also, and you can rig them weedless in case you're getting wrapped on those uh, rappel hooks. And the dye dapper in the sun gill or the Houdini color for the bigger trout has been pretty good. And also the boss shiner has been a very good bullet imitator lately. Both of these are about five inches long, and you can rig them on a, on a five-aught size, one-eighth or one-quarter ounce assassin swim hook. It's a brand new hook that uh, Robin at Saltwater Assassin just came out with, and they work really good on these baits. Want to look for the bigger fish near Spoil Islands? You also want to find them underneath the grass or on the grass flats underneath the mullet pod. The smaller fish are holding in about the three to five foot depth, and you can get some slot size fish in either place. But the numbers you're going to find, the better numbers you're going to find, are on the top All right. Thanks, That's Jim. That's all I got this week, brother. All right, man. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the hookup hotspots from the Central East region. Captain Jim says inshore, snooking around Sebastian in the area, spoil islands, use live croakers, pigfish, or mullet on Suffolk 40 pound test leader. And then offshore kingfish on 70 to 90 foot reefs, slow troll live baits and fish on a wire stinger rig. Now guys, we're here with Steve Tello, the general manager of Fox's Sun Sports and also Edward Bailey from Chevrolet. Guys, you have been here since the very beginning. Steve, thank you so much for the 13 years or 12 years, I'm sorry, is going to be the 13th, but thank you again. Well, thank you, Captain Rick. And, you know, 300 shows, no small feat, and every week you produce it. Uh, hats off to your production crew, and hats off to you. I mean, the material's great, production's great. We have our viewers that are tuned in every week, dedicated viewers. We really appreciate your effort. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you for class. having us. Yeah. Mr. Bailey, speaking of having us, You've been there since day one, and you and I were actually spearheaded this whole project. It's been interesting. It's been, you know, <laughs> we've been at ups and downs times, uh, but it's been a great partnership, Rick. you got a lot of great partners here. You know, it's great to have everybody back in the studio. Uh, you know, keep in mind, it's not just 300 shows, but, you know, on the Great Sun Sports Network, it airs a couple different times. So I, I believe this is over 1,200 different airings Yes. Uh, over those many years. So uh, it's not just Captain Rick. It's friend for life, right? That's it. Yeah. And <laughs> 90 minutes times four a week. We're seeing That's some of those of fish time. twice, though, I think. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. All right, Bree, take it away before these guys do. All right, well, don't go away, guys. And we return to the 300th episode of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're visiting the Northwest region and the Keys. We'll be right back.
The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevrolet, find new roads. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Dex and Docks Lumber Company, Florida's dock and seawall supplier. And King Sailfish Mounts, www.kingsailfish.com. When we created the Silverado Rally Edition, we figured, why stop there? These four new Silverado Special Editions are just the beginning. From this year's fastest growing full-size truck brand, Chevy Silverado. Or during the Chevy Memorial Day sale, choose this Silverado All-Star with a total value of $8,500 when you finance through select lenders. See your local Chevy dealer today. Yamaha's next generation V6 four strokes are changing the game. Mid-range power was awesome. Fuel, the burn. It's unbelievable. I couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. Yeah, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a just I was more like doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it a game changer. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. get to the FWC news and notes we want to thank them for being a part of the show since day one and a fun little fact this section of the show used to be called the FWC rules and regulations but now it's the FWC news and notes so let's get to them June 27th there's a kids fishing clinic in Cape Canaveral July 11th there's another kids fishing clinic in Palm Coast for more information visit myfwc.com and now it's time to go off the deep end You know, we're over here at the CCA workbench and every yes, we week Hummingbird takes us off the deep end. Dave, kingfish, certainly something you know about. Well, a little bit. You know, it was probably one of the very first offshore fish I ever caught was a kingfish, you know, that and a, or a dolphin. You know, it's one of the first things you go fishing for, especially up here off the east central coast. Um, we don't have to go that far to get out to them. Uh, 80 to 120 feet of water, usually in the wintertime, even shallower than that in the summertime. In the summertime, they come all the way up close into the shore, especially the bigger ones. They'll be right up in on the pogies. But during the spring and the summer, we'll get big schools of them up, up off, you know, in 120 feet of water on little ledges and uh, any kind of wreck. Anything that'll hold bait will hold kingfish. And pretty much how we would troll for them, as, I mean, fish for them, as we would troll. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys like to use live baits and probably a lot more effective using a live bait, but we trolled up here a lot. So and we, we, would we use a two-speed reel like this Akuma? Yeah, you could use a two-speed reel. You probably don't need a two-speed reel for any kingfish because, you know, kingfish is a lower gear type thing and you're having to, you know, get a big fish up off the bottom or something. A kingfish, he's, he's a mackerel fish, so he's built for speed, not stamina, just like a big wahoo, you know, they're pretty good for a couple good runs and that's about it for them, you know. They got that white meat, that, you know, it's not real, uh, dark red meat that can pull and pull and pull like a tuna fish can. But uh, kingfish, he's got that, that light meat, so he's good for one good long pull, and then you probably just you know try to get the boat to him and you get a gaff in as soon as you can because they're really good to eat. Now, you, you're going to have to use wire because he's, he's a member of the razor gang, they call them, the barracuda, the wahoo, and the kingfish that, that swim on our shores up here. And if you don't have wire on, 
you're going to get a lot of chop offs and you're going to get a lot of baits cut in half or just you know if you're using monofilament you're going to get nothing back so you learn to tie wire real quick fishing up here first off using pin rigs and you, we use ballyhoos with maybe two uh two hooks with one hook way in the back or if we're going to be using a live bait then you're going to use a, a rig like this, which is a stinger rig, which has a little O'Shaughnessy hook up in the front right. where you pin the, the fish's mouth to, and then you have uh, a stinger rig, which is a little short sec section of wire with a four-aught treble hook on the end of it. And, and that length varies, you know, for the pogey, which what that one you were holding is a little three-inch little stinger. But it, it the bigger the, the bait, size of the bait. Yeah, the bigger the bait, the further you want to get that hook back in the tail. Because all mackerel fish and kingfish especially, they attack the tail. That's how they live. They come and they take the tail off the fish, and then they come back and get the rest. And if you've got a, a hook all the way back there in the tail, hopefully you'll get a hook in him. And that's what that's what that second treble hook is. And usually if you put it back in, a lot of guys will put it up on the top, but if you put it right in the in the bend of that tail, right in the middle of the fish, you have a much better shot of getting a hook in him. Because when he comes up, he's gonna he wants to take that tail off right at the base of the tail. And if you've got a hook there waiting for him, you're gonna get a hook in him, hopefully. In, either that or in his head right. or somewhere else. Because you know, when you're using these rigs, you foul hook a lot of kingfish. Big diamond spool? Big spoons work. We troll spoons. Diamond jig? Man, big diamond jig. We troll that thing and kingfish love to eat it. Especially, you know, you make a good slow turn. Uh, Holiday was telling me earlier. The same thing. You make a slow turn with your ballyhoos or a jig and they sink a little bit. Those kingfish will come up off the bait pod and nail that thing. And, you know, a big swimming plug's the same. Any kind of big swimming plug, a trembler, anything that makes a lot of noise and gets down deeper. You know, we use, we use a lot of planers out there, you know, when we're kingfishing because we're going slow already. You don't have to worry about pulling them out of the water. You're going four to five knots, you know, tops and pulling a dead ballyhoo with a double hook rig behind that, maybe a big sea witch on it. They'll catch a big kingfish or a big wahoo. And, you know, we want to catch both of those if they bite. A I wahoo like it. or a kingfish. I like it. And a lot of the times we catch wahoos because they're in there eating the kingfish. You know, a big wahoo will eat kingfish, and a lot of times we'll hook a big kingfish trying to catch a big, I mean, a big wahoo trying to catch a big kingfish. Nicely done. Well, no worries, man. Not bad for like, 300 I, times of practice. I, I don't have to talk about a permit or something I don't know nothing about. Now, you said something about making a lot of noise. There's also somebody in the studio that makes a lot of noise, and Bree. she's sitting over there. Bree, where are we going? Jim, so sweet, Rick. All right, let's see if <laughs> Captain Jeff Hageman in the Northwest region agrees with Dave and his king capturing methods. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? Pretty We've good. got plenty of kingfish. Uh, spring and our fall run migration runs through our region. We want to look for that magic water temperature, that 68 to 74 degrees. Um, our spring run is much better than our fall run. Our fall run, it seems to get quick, and our fish are pushing through real quick. So that spring run is really when you want to get out there and target those fish and look for that water temperature I was talking about. Like Dave was talking about, you can do the fast trolling. Um, slow trolling is also very effective in our region with red fins, sardines, blue runners. They're all great baits. Or you can just anchor up on on your structure and free line bait back. Chum bag, never a bad idea. They also come to smell, and they're going to look for slicks and, and bait fish. As far as locations looking for kingfish, anywhere the bait's going to be. You want to find that bait, you find the fish. Rock piles, reefs, wrecks, hard bottom, all these will hold that bait and bring the kingfish in. So those are the places you want to target. Like I said, that migration is pushing through usually in spring and the fall. Either around Easter and Thanksgiving. <laughs> Offshore, Captain Harry Connor of Hook'em Harry Charters out of St. Pete reports a good gag grouper bite right now in anywhere from 75 to 100 feet of water. You're going to look for ledges and rock piles. That's where the fish are going to be hanging out. Pinfish and pigfish on a standard bottom rig are going to be your best bait. 100 pound leader, six dot circle hook, and six to eight ounces of lead, depending on the depth you're fishing and how much current you got out there. Less current, drop a little less weight. More current, drop a little more weight. Fish are averaging anywhere from four to 10 pounds right now. All right, what else Moving what you shore. got? Yeah, tell me what you're in shore, bub. I got uh, a cobia, Captain Murray Castello out of Crystal River reports of the cobia. has been starting to make themselves available right now in the shallow flats just outside of Yankee Town and Crystal River. Most of these fish are traveling in small schools right now or pairs. You're gonna find them around channel markers, around crab trap buoys, or just on the flat, cruising around on stingrays. Also, you wanna look around, there's some, been a lot of sea turtles around right now. Check those sea turtles out for cobia, they'll be following them around too. Also, big sharks, another good thing to look for and find cobia on the back zone. 
DOA bait buster in the towing model is what he's been throwing mostly right now. And in that silver and black back is the one he's been using. Also inshore, Captain James Goodwin of GoFloridaFishing.com at a lower Tampa Bay reports a good tarpon bite right now at the Skyway Bridge. Outgoing tide's been the best best tide to fish them on. Bread fins and shad are the best choice. When bridge fishing for tarpon, it's a good idea to have a throw ball on your anchor rope to a little tip. And that fish head, you can throw that cleat off. Bowie's already in the water and you drift away and get on your motor and get, get on top of your fish and get less cut off that way. Fish right now are running anywhere from 70 to 120 pounds. And I got a photo of Captain James Goodwin releasing a nice Tampa Bay tarpon. Oof, that's a big, thick fish. Hey, great report from the Yeti Northwest region, Captain Jeff. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Drummer Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest region. Inshore, snook, around the bridges, docks, and outside bars and passage. Use free lime sardines and pinfish, and then offshore grouper, 75 to 110 feet of water over the rock piles and ledges. Use pinfish on a standard bottom rig. Now, Lisa, the CCA Star Tournament started up last weekend. That's correct. Tell me what kind of reports we've had on tagged redfish. Well, we've actually had quite a few tagged redfish caught. Um, we've had uh, a tagged redfish that was caught the couple days before the tournament started and unfortunately those people were not registered in the tournament and also um, caught the fish before the tournament right we had another fish that was caught on Saturday on the, the morning, first day yeah, of the, the very first day of the tournament and that individual there she is um, she caught the redfish and released it she was not in the tournament um, we also had a couple of other people who have also caught fish and were not in the tournament and had to release them we do have a fish pending right now, verification. Um, that would be the first tagged redfish uh, winning the uh, GMC Sierra uh, 2015, and we're going to be talking to them tomorrow. Well, the point is here, Lisa, that, guys, there's lots of fish out there, and they're also being caught. Don't be one of those people that don't be able to collect the prize, right? They've got to get registered, They've and please get registered. don't forget, you We've can had, register even after the tournament has started. We've had five fish in the last seven days that were caught. Don't be one of the ones that leaves the prize on the doorstep, right, Bree? That's exactly right, Rick. Okay, everyone, get ready for some Keys and Central West Region action when we return only on the three, 300th episode of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Drummond Community Bank. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joinccaflorida.com right now. Chevy Colorado. When you find new roads, you win Motor Trends Truck of the Year. You know, Bree, a few weeks ago we had a beautiful Colorado here on the set, yes. and I know that you were taking time with Edward Bailey and went down to a local dealer to talk about towing. Let's take a look. Let's do. I'm here at our local Chevrolet dealership with Chevrolet marketing manager Edward Bailey. Now, Ed, 
not everyone might have a 29 foot contender or a 22 foot pathfinder, but True. <laughs> this 17 foot technical polling skip is hooked up to this beautiful Colorado. So tell us about the towing capacities that this has. Well, the Colorado, we've talked a lot, a lot about it this year, mm -hmm. had one on, on the set earlier this season. Right. But, you know, the Colorado does tow up to 7,000 pounds. So wow. obviously pulling this skip is, is not a problem. Probably not even tow thing. something, <laughs> uh, tow something even a little bit larger, mm -hmm. jet ski, whatever it is. But remember, the Colorado is built for the active lifestyle, somebody right. like yourself. So it may not be a boat. It may be, you know, scuba gear that you need to put in the back here. It may be something you put on the roof, like a canoe, right. a kayak, a longboard, stand-up paddleboard. It's built for that active lifestyle. Now, the Z71 that we have here today, a mm -hmm. little stiffer suspension. So depending on the boat you might be taking, you know, depend on where you need to go. And this is actually a two-wheel drive with the locking grid differential. So, you know, you may even have a slippery ramp, but you're still going to get off that ramp. So you don't even That's need that four-wheel drive to pull that No, you really don't you. even need the four-wheel no. drive. It's still going to work. You know, the best part about it though, really, mm -hmm. when you look at the mid-sized truck compared to the large truck, you can get a four-cylinder. You can get a six-cylinder. Right. And in the fall, we're going to come out with the all-new diesel. No. Oh, yeah. Highly wow. anticipated. Everybody's <laughs> looking forward. But, but you get in the fuel economy. Uh -huh. You can really take anything, go anywhere for the active lifestyle. And here in Florida, let's face it, you know, you may want to go to that coast or this coast. You need fuel right. economy to get there, you know, whether it's being paddleboard here, or canoe here, or fish mm -hmm. here, or take your boat here. Again, total active lifestyle follow your life, it's built for really the needs of somebody like yourself, young or old or whatever it may be. it's still very spacious inside. You can still very fit all spacious. your camping gear, your hunting gear, whatever it may be, right? Whatever it may be. Whatever it may you be. You need one, Bree. I need one. I'm going to go out and buy myself one. So right. said, you sold me. <laughs> I still need my Colorado, Rick. Shoot, I, know. I forgot. <laughs> what color are you going to get? Black. Black. I think yeah, you good sleek. Black. All right, before I introduce the next captain, it just seems appropriate to acknowledge Maverick Boat Company because they have been the official boat sponsor of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report since it was born and in diapers, right, Rick? Absolutely. Always there for Patting us. Patting the baby, patting the baby. That's it. All right, but without further ado, it's time for everyone's favorite fish fan man from the Keys region, Captain Randy Tao, who's joining us in the studio tonight. Hey, fish fans, good evening. You know, we talk about kingfish in my region. We've got plenty of them starting in Key Largo through Isla Mirada, down to Marathon, all the way to Key West. And we catch them in the springtime and the winter pretty good, mostly around the reefs and the, uh, the wrecks up in the upper keys. But if you really talk about going kingfish and getting serious about it, you're gonna talk about Key West. Key West has probably some of the best kingfish in anywhere in the world. And you've got the Gulf of Mexico, you've got the Tortugas, you've got the Atlantic. So you've really got a lot of places covered where you can go target these kingfish. Now there are guides down there, like Captain Bruce Cronin, who has a big center console called the New Horizons, Mike Weinhofer, who has a big center console, and also Billy Delph, who fish for these fish. They can target these kingfish down there. They have spots, they have places to go where if you wanna catch them on light tackle, they can do that. If you wanna go out there with live bait and chum them and catch them on a fly rod, you can do that. And they've got some big fish down there. You're talking about fish down there from 40 to 50 pounds, and they're, they're pretty common. In our region up in Key Largo and Isla Mirada, you're gonna catch them maybe in the 10 to 15 pound range and a big one there is about 30 pounds. So king fishing, really, when I think about big kings and doing that kind of king fishing, I personally like to do it and Key West is one of my favorite places to do it. All right, tell me about the yellowtail fishing, Randy. You know, this time of year, I love yellowtailing and that's something we do a lot on the edge of the reef. Conditions are everything. You'll hear me talk about the condition, the tide, the current, and these things make a difference when you go to yellowtail. Sometimes it favors success, sometimes it hinders even bothering to go yellowtailing. Now, if you're gonna go 60 to 70 feet of water right now, find some current. The currents usually move in one or two ways, northeast or southwest, and if you got a good flow, start chumming, and you wanna give yourself a little patience because it takes time for these fish to come up off the bottom and get up behind your boat where you can catch them a lot easier than fishing them on the bottom. So give yourself some patience and time to let your chum work and get these fish closer to the top. Now, a couple of days ago, I was fishing with some folks from Palm Beach, and I have a photo of young uh, Charlie DeBay who caught a, wow. a nice yellowtail fishing with his mom and dad over the weekend. Well, I hope Charlie made a sandwich out of that one. Let's go ahead and go oh, inshore, I Randy. think they made a bunch of sandwiches. <laughs> Good. You know, we talk about tarpon. It's tarpon season. I got to mention the tarpon because it's going to be slowing down here pretty soon. It's just how our tarpon season goes. But um, 
there hasn't been as many around the last couple of days, and especially with the weather, if anybody's paid attention to the weather down in the Keys, especially 20, 25 knots of wind is a tough condition to go tarpon fishing in now. It's the middle of fly fishing season, fly fishing tournaments. That's what I've been doing a lot every day. And uh, to have a guy on the bow of your boat casting a fly rod at a moving tarpon as you're rocking and rolling on the ocean side, it's pretty difficult. So uh, the bait fishing still around the bridges, you like the structure when it's blowing. The live crabs are your best bait right now. Captain Rich Smith from the Lower Keys was telling me a story about Bahia Honda Bridge. We talk about the worms all the time. They had a worm hatch last week and there weren't any tarpon. So you know, Rick, how many tarpon get down at, at Bahia Honda Bridge and they just had a different idea. I also know how many snook get in Flamingo. Why don't you tell me about the snook fishing? Oh, uh, you know, that's something that gets uh, a little overlooked this time of year because everybody's tarpon fishing. So there's a few guys that take advantage of the good snook bite in the backcountry, especially Flamingo and out to the west along the beaches. One guy in particular, Captain Brian Permesa, he really kind of targets snook and reds. That's his thing. And he gets on these fish in the backcountry really well. Uh, he does it with live bait. Most of his clients are live bait fishermen. And for the most part, we don't have much with artificial uh, in our region uh, at, like they do in other places. Live bait's gonna be your best bet. He sent me a photo of Chris Ledger, one of his good customers that caught a real nice snook. And uh, this was the other day. All right, great report, Randy. Thanks for coming into the studio, celebrating I'll, the 300. I wouldn't miss this. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the Florida Keys, La Jolla hotspots inshore. Tarpon fish the bridges with live crabs while drifting with the current. Fish early in the morning or late in the afternoon till dark. And then offshore, yellowtail snappers anchor in 60 to 70 feet of water. Make sure you have current and start chumming. Be patient and give the chum time to work before you put your lines in the water, Bree. Sounds good, Rick. That was awesome, Randy. Thanks for being here. All right, now it's time to tell you about some tournaments in the Florida Keys. The Big Pine and Lower Keys Dolphin Tournament, set for June 5th through the 7th, features $35,000 in cash and prizes, including a $20,000 cash prize for the heaviest dolphin caught over 50 pounds. The Skipper's first annual dolphin tournament is scheduled for June 5th to the 7th in Key Largo. Among the $60,000 in prize money is a top $25,000 cash award for the team that catches the heaviest three dolphin. The Veterans of Foreign Wars tournament is scheduled for June 6th in Key West. There's prizes for heaviest dolphin, wahoo, snapper, and grouper, along with awards for largest fish caught by women and junior anglers. Founded by baseball great and avid fly fisherman Ted Williams, the Gold Cup Tarpon Tournament set for June 15th to the 19th in Isla Mirada and is limited to 25 anglers. And now, Rick, let's hear from our trusty correspondent in the Florida Keys, Andy Newman. Andy, tell us. Hi guys, the third annual Ladies Dolphin Tournament of the Florida Keys is to kick off Friday, June 12th with fishing on Saturday, June 13th. Now headquarters for the event it's the Florida Keys Elks Lodge in Tavernier. Prizes to be awarded to the top 10 teams and determined by the combined weights of three dolphin catches. Top prize, $3,000, and there's additional cash and merchandise prizes for other finishers. More details by calling 305-522-4868. And information on other Florida Keys tournaments and accommodations can always be found on the Florida Keys website, it's flakeys.com. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Andy. And Rick, we are sitting in front of Yamaha Motors and they are the best motors around. We're so lucky to have had them as our sponsor for 12 years. 12 you know years? What? 12 years. <laughs> and I've had them on Sportsman's Adventures for over 20. Shoot. How about that? They're special. They are special. <laughs> and someone else who has been around for 12 years is our next captain, Jeff Page, in the Central West region. Thanks for uh, sticking around and having so much patience with Rick, Jeff. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Bree, what's your favorite Yamaha motor? Yamaha Motors. What's your favorite size? What's your favorite model? Ah, uh, 250 works. Uh, <laughs> at 250 SHOs. A bunch of them. Just a bunch of them. Yeah. One boat. All right. <laughs> Jeffrey, anyway, tell me about our it. Kingfish bite in the Startron Central West region has no shortage of supply of fish and big ones as well. With February and March and April being the best spring months for the kings, there are still a whole bunch of fish hanging around due to the abundance of bait schools, Rick. We've got thread fins and Spanish sardines up and down the beach out to 11 miles out. And that means lots of kingfish still hanging around in them. 
You control them with X wraps or bomber lip plugs, as well as a variety of larger spoons. And the spoons you can rig, you know, direct to your tackle, or you can rig them on a number two or number three planer. Uh, as well, you can uh, drift with free line baits out or anchor up over reefs or structure or any of the artificial reefs and chum them to the boat with live pilchards, uh, as well as you, you might pick up a couple nice Spanish or Bonitas. Look for the Kings also in the ship channel from Egmont Key to the Skyway Bridge. They're averaging 12 to 25 pounds with a few 30 or 40 pounders mixed in and the whole process will start again in the fall. I've got a photo tonight of Captain Randy Powell of Economy Tackle and his client George Parker with a nice king they got last week. I these two, mangrove snapper. Mangrove snapper bite remains strong along with the American Reds, but the mangrove snapper has been probably the most consistent. Coming in from the boys down south around Stump Pass and Gasparilla Pass, and they're reporting the mangs are holding in 75 to 100 feet of water over ledges and wrecks and hard bottom. Live pinfish or pilchards are probably your best bait, but cut sardines will do. They're anchoring up, they're chumming with chum bags, as well as cutting up small pieces of sardines, and the mangs are averaging three to eight pounds. Let's go inshore, Bub. Inshore, your favorite species, tarpon. West Central region's blowing up with tarpon and throughout the entire region. Uh, the beautiful thing is, Rick, there's a lot of different areas. It's not like you're gonna be stressed out having to fish with a bunch of boats. It's not uncommon to find a big group of fish any time of the day up and down the beach and have it all to yourself. Getting out early, you're gonna have shots at laid up schools, whereas at midday, you might find a big group of fish that are holding six to 10 feet down below the surface, but they're real, real easy to stay with as long as the sun's out and you can see that black spot of fish moving with these crystal clear conditions we're having in the Gulf of Mexico. Fly fishermen are getting plenty of shots of laid up fish on top of the sandbars just outside of Gasparilla Pass, Big Pass, New Pass, and Passage Key as well. All in all, it's been an awesome May and June's gonna be just as well. Look for this full moon to be epic. I've got a photo tonight from uh, Captain Rob Gorda out of St. Pete with a double stud two tarpon caught by Dr. McGill Lopez and Peter Castro. Wow, that's an epic picture by an epic guide for sure. That is, that's a beautiful picture. Isn't All right, it? tell me about the snook fishing, Buck. All right, lots of snook and big snook have made their way out on the beaches in the entire region. Live filtered, still the best bait, but you, you lure anglers have a great shot at a big line cider by walking the beach and throwing the saltwater assassin sea shad four inch paddle tail in the violet moon pattern rigged on a quarter ounce silver hookup jig head. Get out on the flats early and throw a big topwater plug like a skitter walk or a super spook and you're gonna have a shot at a big one. I've got a photo tonight of my good friend Scott Stottlemyre with a 40 inch snook he got on the long bar area on a bone colored super spook. And the funny thing was the day before he lost a fish the same size. That's a good looking man with a good looking fish. All right, Jeffrey, great report from the StarTron Central West region. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the sea sucker hotspots. In short, tarpon, poons all over the beaches throughout the entire region. Throw free line uh, corks or live crabs and pinfish and thread fins. And then offshore red snapper, nice American reds holding on most of the hard bottom and ledges in 90 feet of water. And remember, the season doesn't open until June 1st, Bree. All right, well, I have a question for Jeff. He knows he's on the line. Where is he, huh? He <laughs> should be in the studio, right? He should be. But he ain't. That's okay, right. when we return, we're visiting the Panhandle region and then we're checking out what swag Dave has for us at the workbench. It better be fit for a king, Dave. It better be. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hookup Lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. Navionics, we start where the road ends. Maverick Boat Company, celebrating 30 years of leadership in innovation, conservation, and stability. 
and First National Bank, your first choice for better banking. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. All fishermen are created equal. Some just use better fishing line. CCA Workbench and new products. You bobbling my I'm head over there, head Dave. Look at that, look at that. Bap, 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 bap. It's even more fun than doing it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about new products. Well, first off, we're going to start with this. We had a fellow come in the studio, and he, he made lures the other week. And he, I, he said he made these Monster 3Xs, and they're really super tough lures. Bring them in. So here they are. The Monster 3X, he makes all kinds of uh, plastic lures, uh, shrimp, shrimp and jig heads and, and uh, little uh, shad and whatnot. What's really cool about them is, is they're made out of something that's incredibly strong. I mean, it's really thin. So I know you're it's hard to, to break it. It's Feral. really hard to break, and that's their that's their deal. Is you know one bait, fish after fish. They say you can catch thirty fish on one of these things. You might not be able to catch thirty king mackerels on one, no. but uh, but you probably catch thirty trout or thirty snook or thirty redfish on one of them because they are super strong. And so why super do you strong. think this hinge makes a difference? Well, it makes it swim a little better. You know, you take a little material out of there and it frees it up and and, and makes it swim a little better and gives more it wiggling. more action, more yeah. jubilating. Exactly. All so, right. So any you know Monster 3X, you know, they make all kinds. Of, they also say that you don't even have to use a collared uh, jig head because this stuff grips so tight. It's like a Chinese finger puzzle when it when it pulls. It just grips and grips and grips on the stuff. Well, you take that home and you try it and you report back. I will. I certainly will. All right, I'm going to try this. Well, the, you know, Starbright, you know, I mean, uh, Startron, Ring Clean. This stuff is great for every kind of motor. Not only your outboard motor, but for your for your uh, uh, lawn mowers or your edgers or whatever it what it does is it keeps deposits from starting and if there's any deposits in there it has an enzyme that will actually eat it up so it's a good thing to keep deposits from forming and if you have any deposits in there it'll eat it up and you can use it all the time or you can just use it whenever you fill up so let me get this straight this is an engine treatment not like the startron which right. is a fuel treatment right all that does is keep the it, it keeps the ethanol from turning into water. What this does is it takes deposits off your you know, combustion areas, your carburetor. It just keeps things clean. The all your fuel injection. The valves, all exactly, that stuff. Exactly, exactly. I it, like it. Yeah, it's good stuff. Always man. good stuff coming And, and out this of little bottle, you know, 160 gallons. Woo! So it's one ounce to 10 gallons. So all right. you can go and go and go. What's the big thing? Well, that's the, that's the cool thing down there. It's a Sevlar stand-up paddle board, uh, Sevlar, which What's really good about this one is it's inflatable. You know, a lot, a lot of guys are using the paddle boards now, the stand-up paddle boards to go fishing with. They're big and bulky. They're heavy. You know, they're heavy. That thing is like half There's as, nothing. it weighs half as much as a regular stand-up paddle board. It will fit in your trunk. It folds all the way down because it is inflatable and will fit in your trunk. It's still very rigid though. It gets, you yeah. know, it, the way it's designed, it keeps it very rigid and solid so that when you're up there 
paddling around on it, it it's very stable. It's even got the deal in the front where you can put your cooler or a bag, you know, you can put your Yeti hopper up there in yeah. the front. You Mount your paddle. GoPro and watch yourself paddle around. Exactly. You, you do all that kind of stuff. All right. <laughs> so what else you got there? Pretty Well, I've got the, I've got some Seaguar stuff. Uh, this is the Seaguar Threadlock braided line. Um, it's a hollow core uh, eight, 18 strand, which means it's got a lot of little strands of, of, of uh, whatever the heck they make that stuff out of. Dynema or yeah, something? Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. But this stuff, it, it's incredibly thin, and you don't feel any stretch in it. It's got the hollow core. So this 80 hollow core, you can, you can feed up some 50 or 60, even up to 100-pound monofilament up inside of it and make yourself some wind-on leaders with it. You know, it makes a great wind-on leader connection. Mm -hmm. Also, if you just want to fish with it deep, you know, if you want to fish on the bottom, there's no stretch. Let me ask you, you think it'd lines. work good for kite lines on your kite reel? Oh, of course. Okay. It would make a great kite line. You know, you cool. might want to, you know, wear gloves when you're handling it because it can cut oh, you. We use all the braid on there now. Yeah, but you just, you know, be, be careful whenever you use braid for any kind of real heavy application like that. When it's, something's pulling on it, wear a glove. We got some cool AFCO shorts here. You know, these, these are the, uh, the sunset board short, which is the real pretty ones there. They don't have as many pockets on them. They're more like, you know, swimming shorts. I like it. Yeah, really, you know, 11, uh, 21 inch in, inseam, little pockets on the front. All the, all the AFCO shorts have good uh, Cordoba uh, lining inside for, the, for your, for your uh, pliers. I like it. And nice it, colors. Yeah, and, like this is, and this is the sector brand. These are more of the fishing style. They got, you know, really good pockets up in the front for your pliers and whatnot. And also, I like to have these little button closures on your pockets. Right. Which, man, I, I end up putting stuff in my front pockets and these. If they have the Velcro up on the front, after a while, if you wear them long enough, that Velcro starts going. I have dropped more wallets around. But what's really cool is these have the nice button closure on them. And these actually have a zipper on the inside. And, and just like that. AFCO, which is part of it, it's a tradition, they actually have the pocket again. They again. call it the tool pocket, That's right. whatever. You can put your Good pliers. Good hard lining in there so it won't, your pockets won't rip a hole in your shorts. Right. AFCO makes great stuff. You know, their shorts have been, uh, They've been world around. renowned forever. They've been around forever. So I was wearing we're AFCO lucky shorts. To have, lucky to have AFCO as a good sponsor 80s. for us. Those little shorty shorts that everybody teases me I, about. I bet you looked great in them. I did, man. Loose knuckle. <laughs> All right, Bree. I can't say yeah. anything. Just take it, please. See, my favorite part of that was when you hit Rick in the head like a bobblehead. Do it again. Do it again for me. No, no, I won't. Mean, okay, fine. All right, hailing from the Panhandle region is Captain Pat Deneen, who is also a 300 original and has all you need to know to get some bites this weekend. King me, Pat. I'm still laughing about the moose knuckle, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> so we get kingfish up here from spring through fall, and this summer has been an excellent season for king mackerel fishing. Uh, the fishermen caught gulf wide throughout the region. I spoke with Captain Sean Chalker of Bar Hop and Charters over in uh, uh, Indian Pass, and he's been telling me the Port St. Joe buoy line, and pretty much all the bottom structure between Apalachicola and Mexico Beach is holding plenty of king mackerels, and that trend holds true all the way west of Pensacola. Primarily, it's a live bait fishery using cigar minnows, herring, blue runners, or, or blue fish, or you know, really pretty much any smaller fin fish. But the old school tactics, like trolling a dead cigar minnow on a duster, or even pulling a Clark spoon or a deep diving lip plug, <clears throat> they're all still very effective. Uh, the sizes vary from snakes to smokers, but the average fish is running about nine to 13 pounds. And there's a photo of a uh, Rhodes and Page Hart. And that's with a smoker king they caught with Captain Justin Leak out of Panama City. They were live baiting for jacks with a mono leader, and they caught a really nice fish. And that's a pretty cool picture. Yeah, it is. That's a great picture. Okay, Pat, what else you have for me offshore? The red snapper season opened in state waters last week, and, and the first couple of days, the weather was perfect for snapper fishing. There was lots of fish caught. Pretty much all the structures, 65 plus feet of water, are holding snappers. Uh, but make sure you stay within nine nautical miles of the beach until the federal waters open. Use a slip sink on, on the deeper stuff, but you can often get away with a, a, a free line and a wounded or a dead bait over the shallower stuff. And a lot of the very public spots hold quality fish on there right now. You don't have to have all these little secret spots to catch them. Uh, Bree came up with me last week. She released a 17-pound snapper yeah. 65 feet of water, two miles from the path, and uh, and... All we had to do was lighten up our tackle to get the bite. Most of the fish are running four to eight pounds, but there are a whole lot of much bigger fish be being caught. And I believe there's a photo there of, uh, of Bree and her fish. 
Oh, look, proof's in the pudding, and that's definitely pudding. That was good. <laughs> that's pudding. right. All right, let's go inshore, bub. In short, Rick, the, the trout bite continues to be pretty good in the upper base systems throughout the region, and also Santa Rosa Sound. Uh, uh, Captain Justin Lee in Panama City, he tells me just to throw the net, get a pile of pogies, and set up on a grass flat edge or point and live chum heavily. Most of the fish he's been catching are running 15 to 20 inches, which are keeper fish, but I saw a picture of a fish caught in West Bay that was over 30 inches and 9 pounds, so there are some bigger fish around. In Santa Rosa Sound, Captain Eddie Woodall, a full net charter. He's been primarily working the grass and the docks, uh, casting mirrodines or topwater baits. And Captain Eddie says the bigger trout are up in the shallow water. And it's a little bit tr tougher to get a bite from those guys. But if you want to get the numbers, push out in the four to seven feet of water on the grass where there's more fish, but they, but they're fewer big fish. But it's, a, it's more quality, less quantity. And if you just want to catch a lot of quantity, uh, the blue fish, the lady fish, and the Spanish mackerel are going to you know, make you happy if, by fishing the deeper grass flats near the passes throughout the region. Crab Island in Destin, the backside of Santa Rosa Island at Fort Pickens, and also the deeper grass in Crooked Island Sound are always good spots to catch them. Uh, cast spoons, midwater swim baits, and skitter walks. If you're a fly fisherman, cast a crease fly or a clouser. I mean, like I say, it's not the glamour redfish or trout or the snook or the tarpon, but it's, it's fun fishing, it's, it's a lot of catching and fresh Spanish mackerel, they always cook up pretty good. Hey, Pat, I heard a rumor while Bree was up there, you know, she brought a whole plethora of Akuma tackle for you. And you actually, there was one rod that you liked. It was a black rod, which was a shadow stalker in the medium heavy, as well as it had a Samar 4000 on there with some 832 braid. Did you I, like that I, rod? I, I, he tried I to tried keep to it. steal all of it, Rick, but they, took, they, they didn't leave me anything. Well, I'll make but a deal. I was happy with, was happy with all that Akuma tackle we used. All right, well, I'll make a deal with you. I'll send you one of those Akuma rod and reel combos, but I want you to fish it hard and let me know what you think, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll beat it up. All right, buddy. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Captain Pat says, inshore, trout and redfish. Get out at night and fish the lighted docks in Santa Rosa Sound with live shrimp, finger mullets, and small croakers. And then offshore red snappers on the reef and wrecks in state waters using live bait on a slip sinker rig. He, he did. He tried to keep it. He did? He, he did. Sure? And I said, no, I don't want to make Poppy mad. I can't. I got to take it. Sorry. Next time, but just, now you're gonna just call him. Santa Claus. You can, send him. you can send me up again. Okay. And I'll bring it to him. Oh, boy. In I person. <laughs> okay, we have a lot more exciting stuff coming up on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, so don't drift off. We'll be right back. High five. No. <laughs> Look, there's Grandma and Poppy. Oh, hi. There they are. There they are. And Christy. The and Chevy me. Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti coolers. Built for the wild. CCA Florida. The voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing. Guy Harvey. Marine wildlife artist and conservationist. And Sea Sucker. Vacuum mounting systems. Serious fishermen demand quality equipment on their boats and on shore. That's why Florida boaters have trusted decks and docks for over 20 years for dock lumber, hardware, and accessories. Tough products that stand up to the roughest environments and elegance to please the most discerning homeowner tastes. Decks and docks, supplying waterfront customers with lumber, decking, and seawall with 10 locations across Florida. This is amazing. I love this car. Real people are discovering surprising oh. things at Chevy. This is a road trip car. We're sold. It's so pretty. <laughs> They're good looking cars. It feels great. Perfect. This is not what I would expect from a Chevy at all. Get more than you expect for less than you imagined at the Chevy Memorial Day sale going on now. Get cash back for 15% of the MSRP on select 2015 models in stock the longest. That's over $3,100 on the Chevy Cruze. Hurry, sale ends Monday. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer.
Hey, we're here at PowerPole headquarters and today's PowerPole tip of the week, it's about the micro. Now guys, what makes the micro so special is it's a very lightweight, compact unit. All you really need to have a micro is simply a 12 volt battery. Now it's the perfect anchor system for a kayak and as well as John boats and bow systems on your bigger boats. Now remember this, the easy part is that you just simply put it wherever it is, whether it's on the stern, the transom, or in some cases, if you're using it on a kayak, you might mount it over on the side, slightly off, to, off center. It still works the same way though, guys. The true and tried method of power pole is simply push the remote for down and you can push the remote for up. Remember, the micro is the perfect lightweight system for all of your anchoring needs. And that's today's power pole tip of the week. It's about the micro and keeping it light. You know what it's also about, Rick? What? All about the bobbleheads. How about that, Brie? Bobblehead for the 300th episode. Bobble that, except now you look. have to make sure I'm taller than you. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. You are okay. taller. This is the only time I can win. It is, All it right. is. All right, let's give it up for our Southeast Captain Jimbo Thomas from the Thomas Flyer, who has a few options for y'all when it comes to catching those kinks. That's right, Bree, and hello, Rick. Hey, buddy. Well, you know, we normally have some of our best kingfish action of the year right now, but for some reason, bites have only been so-so, but the ones that we have been catching have been nice size for the most part. Now, there are a couple of different ways to go about catching kings. One of the most popular, at least in the southeast region, is live baiting, and that is my preferred way to fish for them. Now, kings will eat just about any live bait. Some of the more popular baits are pilchard, herring, goggle eyes, blue runners and speedos and those big things they like to eat big baits like those speedos and those runners. Now, another great way to catch kings is to troll a wireline or planer outfit with a three and a half to four drone spoon or a pink sea witch with a strip bait. You can use a bonita strip or a ballyhoo strip and the best trolling speed for these kings is around five to six knots. Now you can also drift a one to three ounce triple hook jig with a dead sardine or ballyhoo and that's what they do in the party boats a lot they do catch a lot of kings on those party boats now regardless of how it's done you want to use at least an 18 inch piece of number four or six wire leader to prevent any cutoff from those sharp teeth now in the past week most of the king bites have been in 90 to 150 feet of water on kite fish and drifted live bait and aboard the Thomas Flyer, we've had kings up to 25 pounds on three lined double hook speedos in the last couple days. We've been fishing north of the Miami Sea Buoy. Now staying offshore, our best fishing has been for blackfin tunas, which have been in the 25 to 30 pound range. And this is the peak season for these blackfin tunas. The tunas have been hitting drifted and kite fish pilchards herrings and blue runners in 120 to 200 feet of water and to get the most bites go with 30 to 40, 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leaders and 5.0 to 6.0 circle hooks. Now we have gone stealth with the light leaders the last couple days and we still got bites on the rigs with wire leaders so who the heck knows. But the bites have been best early in the morning and then late in the afternoon which is pretty standard for these tunas and they've been steady throughout the region, but after talking with Captain Art, Captain Art Staff aboard the Native Sun, sounds like the Hillsborough Inlet area has been the hottest. Now I got a photo here, and this is of Bill Butler, Jr. and Sr., with my brother Rick Thomas in the middle. This is a pair of nice tunas and a 20-pound king that we caught aboard the Thomas Flyer on Tuesday. Nice now, job. Now moving inshore, What's that, Rick? Nice job, Jimbo. Good job. Tell me what else you got inshore, bud. You got it. You know, it makes us look good when those fish uh, bite. Yeah, it Makes it, does. it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, moving inshore. This is the last weekend to keep a slot side snook. And they've, they've been biting in the inlets and around the lit docks and bridges of the intercoastal waterway. In the inlets, drifting the jetties in the evenings with full eyes mullets, pinfish, and herrings on a Jupiter rig and working flare hawk jig has been producing slot and above slot size fish on any tide so long as the water is moving. But now with this east wind that we're experiencing, the incoming tide is going to be much calmer in those inlets. And then around the bridges and the docks, 
work the shadow lines with live baits, swimming plugs, and soft plastics on the outgoing tide. Remember that the limit is one snook per person in the slot size between 28 and 32 inches. Now sticking with early morning and evening fishing, there have been tarpon in the inlets and also around the bridges feeding on live shrimp, crabs, and mullet. The tide in the inlet, just like with the snook, it doesn't matter as long as it's moving. And around the bridges, the outgoing has been the best. There's also been schools of tarpon on the outside flats. Our good buddy, Captain Joe Gonzalez, he's been finding migrating tarpon on the ocean side points off any of the islands from Soldier's Key south to Angelfish Creek. And he's been fishing the incoming tide, targeting them with crab pattern flies, neutral shrimp pattern swim baits, and small live crabs on 5-0 circle hooks. He says to work the bait slowly through the school or cast in front of the school and make a very slow retrieve with your bait. Now, I got a photo here. This is a beautiful tarpon caught by Andrew Narducci from Pennsylvania, and he was fishing with Captain Joe Gonzalez. All right. You know, Jimbo, one of the things that Kathy and I feel very strongly about is our relationship with CCA, and we are giving all you guides as well as Dave Farrell, a life membership to CCA. So we just want to let you know that while we had you on the line. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the South Florida National Bank, First National Bank of South Florida, Southeast Hotspots Inshore Drift Live Pin Fish along the jetties for your local inlet for your last chance of a snook breed. And then offshore, fish live baits along with the air along the edge of the Gulf Stream and 90 to 200 feet of water for blackfin tunas, kingfish, and sailfish. Bree. All right, Rick, well, to round out our fifth 300 original is Captain Ronnie Houston from the Southwest region. Hey, Ronnie. You there, Ronnie? Pleasure being here. Okay. All right, go <laughs> ahead, bud. You know, uh, when it comes to the king mackerels in the region, according to Cap Mike Avenon, they can be caught along the wrecks, ledges and hard bottom, and then also in a variety of methods and bait. But you can also anchor up in these areas or toll for them. Now in the region, you can catch fish as close to seven miles, but even out to 100 miles. The strongest concentrations of fish in the area would be anywhere from November to March. But you can catch these fish all year round. Now you can swallow toll plugs, planers with spoons, slowly troll live herring and blue runners, as well as anchor up using large live baits such as the herring and blue runner. Always make sure when you're fishing for these fish, use wire and stinger hooks. And another method would be getting in the large Spanish mackerel schools, getting below them. But most of the fish average anywhere from six to 20 pounds, and it doesn't hurt to troll around the schools or drop live baits around them. And I've got a picture of some typical fish caught with Mike Avenon by Ardro Gilb, with daughter from Minnesota with a typical pair of kings in the region. Nice fish, Ronnie. All right, let's stay offshore. Now, with the beautiful weather we've been having, hot water temps and then calm seas, there's been a big push of yellow tail snapper here in the last week, anywhere from Fort Myers Beach to Boca Grande. A lot of these fish have moved in. You want to concentrate on Rex North and Rexton Towers back down to the south. Now, the depths you want to concentrate in vary anywhere from 60 to 110 feet. Obviously, heavy chumming to get the fish up, and then light the chum as you get them around. Now, according to Captain Mike Gavinon, these guys are using a 1-0 VMC circle hook with small chunks of squid, carrying a live shrimp. Light leaders is also the secret, but depending upon where the fish are in the water column, you want a flat line or use just a little bit of weight, like I say, wherever they're out in the water column. But also while you're out there fishing for these yellowtails, make sure you got some live cods with you. He's been telling me big schools of permit are with these fish. So like I say, make sure you have some live bait, live crabs handy with you in case the permits do show up. Now on the inshore side, the tarpon. There's been a strong bite from Fort Myers Beach to Stump Pass, according to Captain Josh Greer of Double XL Chargers. As Josh reports, the outgoing title on the beaches and passes have been working better in the last week. Also, he's had better luck staying away from the heavily worked areas of boats and finding smaller groups of fish. Now understand, not as many fish, but more hookups. Also, if the weather picks up, nighttime fishing is also good for the tarpon. And if it's too rough, fix the intercoastal bridges and docks, protected areas, plenty of fish around the lights and shadow lines. Baits include five to seven inch lip plugs, 
six to ten inch soft plastic, live pinfish, crabs, mullet, and cut baits on the bottom. Fish are averaging 40 to 150 pounds. Here's a typical tarpon caught at night with Captain Josh and Mike Wolf, juvenile tarpon caught in the intercoastal area. Now, beautiful weather we're going to have for the weekend, snook bite. We've got some better tides this week, so the snooks seem to be more abundant in the passes and along the beaches, possibly getting ready for the spawn. Water's been clean and plenty of bait around. Now, the tides right now are half the incoming, the first half the outgoing has been a little better. Plenty of small and oversized snook in the mix. Bait's choice have been silver spoons, three to five inch flip plugs in white, chartreuse, olive green colors, as well as three to five inch to five inch soft plastics on a jig head or hook weedless and throw it onto the sand and then drag into the water. Sometimes the first 10 feet makes a difference, but you can also use live filters and thread fish. Like I say, there are some fish right now being caught up to 40 inches. Ronnie, great report. Thanks for sticking with us all these years. It's been an honor, and I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Florida Outdoor Experience hotspots from the Southwest region. In short, Redfish, Ragula Key to Pine Island Marina using silver spoons, topwater plugs, scented soft plastics, cut baits at the top of the high, fishing the bushes, and then offshore, triple tail, Naples to Fort Myers Beach, five to 15 miles, uh, out along the wrecks, floating debris, and the crab pots. Oh, they, I bet you have some good stories with Ronnie. Oh, well, we After all have these the, years. Me and the midnight, we go way back. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> all right, with one region and a coastal conservation minute tip left to go, you can't leave us yet. We'll be right back. All right. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. The IGFA, conservation through education. Get your hands wet. Florida Outdoor Experience. Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company. And there's no stopping Okuma. Introducing Helmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a fob and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmaster at your command. There's no specials on days like today. Nothing's cheap. Nothing's on the house. You can have your happy hour, but only after you've paid the full price. of gasoline, it's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Chevy Colorado. When you find new roads, you win Motor Trend's Truck of the Year. Today's Coast of Conservation Minute is about picking the right size D hooker. Now guys, understand that this is really critical because you can certainly stay away from the fish that have bad teeth. More importantly, it also extends your reach. A long D hooker like this allows you to reach over and unhook the fish without taking the fish out of the water. 
Now the next thing that comes to mind is catfish. You don't want to be anywhere near those spines. You know, it's one thing to have teeth like a shark or a barracuda or a wahoo or a kingfish, but the spines that are very poisonous on a catfish can be problematic in your day of fishing. Now bait fishing, there's a whole nother animal because if you touch the fish, the baits, your thread fins, your goggle eyes, pilchards, you want to use a de-hooker. And the reason why is your actual fingerprints will actually come off on the fish's skin and in a matter of minutes, you'll be able to see it. So today's Costa Conservation Minute, it's about picking the right de-hooker. Hey, I saw you catching oh, bait. How do you like that? Catching more than so one at a time. fun. That was amazing. And he had a the hooker. He did? The de hooker? Yeah. yeah. The well, de every man wants to have a de hooker. Oh, okay. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, <laughs> just get off, <laughs> Captain Tommy Derringer, who has been such a great addition to the show. Take us to the Derringer Zone, Tommy. Hey, guys. Hey, congratulations on your 300th episode. That is awesome. Now, you know, kingfish are a big deal here in the Strike Zone Northeast region. You know, they're a staple here all summer long, and just about anyone with or even without a boat can target them. And most anglers are going to slow troll just off the beach, but you can catch them out deep on the reefs and wrecks, or even catch them off one of the local piers. Now, we have numerous big kingfish tournaments here in my region, like the Greater Jacksonville Kingfish Tournament, Northeast Florida Kingfish Shootout, and the King Buster. It's just a few. And there's just a ton of people that love their kingfish around here. The kingfish are on the beach right now, and I spoke to kingfish tournament angler, Nathan Stewart, Seafood Kitchen, and he tells me there are a few things you're really gonna wanna look for when targeting those beach fish. That you're gonna wanna find the bake, uh, which of course is pogies in this case, as well as some clean water. Now Nathan says if you can't find clean water, that probably means the fish are gonna be out deeper. So you might wanna check the party ground. And even when the water is clean along the beach, those nearshore wrecks will hold some smaller fish pretty much all summer long. Now, water temperature is also going to be key with about 75 to 80 degrees being just about right. The go-to setup is going to be a number five wire leader with a stinger rig, and the baits of choice are going to be live pogies up on the top or ribbon fish down on a downrigger. And you can find some nice ribbon fish there at Strike Zone. Now, you're going to want to troll as slow as possible, and a lot of people will use some type of drift stock or even tow a big bucket to help slow down as much as possible. Now, I've got a couple of photos here. As I mentioned earlier, you can catch some nice kingfish from the local beach piers, and this is Matt Chris with a 44-pound king he caught from the Jacksonville Beach Pier last week. I used a live blue kit, bluefish to catch that fish. Wow. Now, we've got an, an, another picture here. This is a beach-caught kingfish that Nathan Stewart and Captain Jeffrey Crabtree caught off of Ponavedra Beach. That's a nice fish, now, yeah, uh, Tommy. That's a great fish, man. Yeah, now, I also spoke with Captain Jason Hadges from J-Hook Fishing Charters, and he's telling me that the grouper fishing has been on fire lately. And he tells me that as the water warms up, more of those big grouper are starting to move further offshore, and they're going to be on that natural bottom and on the ledges from the 21-fathom bottom on out to the ledge. Now, Captain Jason says be sure to bump up your leader size and tighten the drag to full lockdown mode if you're going to want to get the jump on that big gag or black belly bite. Now, he says the bait of choice is there any kind of good size live bait or whole Boston mackerel. Now, moving inshore, you know, with warmer water comes more bait inshore, and right now that's definitely where the rest are going to be hanging out. Now, we have an early morning high tide this weekend, tossing a topwater plug like a skitter walk is going to be a great way to find some redfish. Now, the flats around Matanzas Inlet are holding some big schools of finger mullet right now, and those redfish are going to be right along the edges of the grass with the bait on that high tide. You're going to want to toss your skitter walk as close as you can get it to the grass and all around that bait. Now, over the last couple of days, they seem like if you just give it a little bit of a pause every once in a while, that's when they're going to want to hit it. Now, heading towards midday at low tide this weekend, all the area creeks are holding redfish, in the deeper bends on the last of the outgoing and the first of the incoming tide. You're going to want to fish those deeper bends as well as the edges of any exposed oyster bars with a mud minnow or a finger mullet on a quarter ounce jig head. And there's a bunch of small reds around right now, but there are quite a few slot fish in there too. And speaking of slot redfish, I've got a really cool picture here of Brant Hudgens with a nice slot redfish he caught on a trip with his dad Brian earlier this week. I love it, Tommy. Cool. Great picture with the kids. I love it. Keep them coming. All right, tell me about your second inshore species. 
All right, we'll talk about the trout. You know, the trout have been a little hit or miss with the warming water temperatures, but if you get out really early or just before dark, that topwater trout bites them pretty good. Now, my clients have been catching them up shallow on the flats on the higher tide stage in the same areas that the redfish are hanging out. Now, again, you're going to want to look for the big concentrations of bait, and that's where you're going to want to fish. Now, I also spoke to numerous captains this week that have been on a good trout bite fishing the shell bars right along the intercoastal waterway just north of the Polano Inlet, mostly on that incoming tide when the cleaner water starts coming up. Now, they're catching those trout on plastic paddle tails rigged on eight or quarter ounce jig heads. I've got one last photo here. This is Lou Powell with a nice trout she caught from me first thing in the morning on a skitter walk. And it seems like the secret to catching those trout might be matching your lure color to your shirt. Hey, you know, Tommy, I got a technical question for you. You send in fabulous photos. He does. And I want, what kind of advice would you give our viewers that are watching on taking that epic photo that you always send in every week? Well, it's, you know, probably the biggest thing is getting the lighting right. If you've got the sun facing you, that's the way you want to take the picture. A lot of people get that backlit picture and you can't really see the person's face or the fish very much. So make sure that light get him right on the fish and right on that person's face, and that'll make for a really nice picture. All right, great report, Tommy. I've got one other question for you. If somebody wants to come up and fish with you, tell me what they should do to come and do that. Well, they can give me a call or they can contact me through my email address, uh, which is captain at inshoreadventures.net, and uh, we can look at some tides and when the fishing is going to be good, and we'll set it up. All right, sounds great. I want to go fish with Captain Tommy, but we got to uh -huh. take a look at the hot spots <laughs> from the Strike Zone Northeast region. Captain Tommy says, inshore redfish and trout, super early in the morning, look for the big concentrations of finger mullet, and then toss a skitter walk along the grass edges and along that bait. And then offshore grouper from 140 feet out to the ledge, fish the natural bottom and ledges with big live baits or whole Boston mackerel. Whoa, whoa. Big so is going to get you big fish. Big, that makes sense. What is super early in the morning, Rick? Super like, early is like when we're buying Dion's chicken down there in Florida <laughs> City in the dark. That is super early. <laughs> you don't even know you're awake yet. All yeah. right, we're almost finished with our 300th episode, but you have to stay hooked in order to hear what we're hooking next week for the big 301. Plus, there's cake. We'll be back in a gif. Cake! I love cake. Thanks, Bree. When we created the Silverado Rally Edition, we figured... Why stop there? These four new Silverado Special Editions are just the beginning. From this year's fastest growing full-size truck brand, Chevy Silverado. Or during the Chevy Memorial Day sale, choose this Silverado All-Star with a total value of $8,500 when you finance through select lenders. See your local Chevy dealer today. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha Forward Thinking. The all-new F200 inline four-stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Forward fish are small fish that hold marine food webs together. Put simply, forage fish like pilchards turn sunshine into snook. The IGFA and other conservation organizations are working with the FWC to improve forage fish management in Florida, ensuring that there's enough food in the water for our game fish will maintain Florida's legacy as the fishing capital of the world. Visit FloridaForagefish.org to learn more and to sign the Forage Fish Pledge. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And make sure to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.chevyfloridainsiderfishingreport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up.
Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are talking dolphin. So be <laughs> sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday. Plus, you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Check your local listings four times. Look at all these beautiful men I have standing behind me. Oh, how, my goodness. I'm getting hot. You know, <laughs> We got Charlie Johnson from Maverick Boat Company, as well as Les Stewart from Contender. We also got Randy in the house, Steve Tello from uh, from Fox Sun Sports. And we got Mr. Bailey. I mean, this guy might as well just buy a house down here. He's on the show so much. <laughs> he should. Farrell, 300 episodes. You've been there since the beginning. Thank That's you so amazing. much. And you know what, Mr. Tello, will you please really? take the honors to cut that cake? Cut it. Cut the cake. Here we go. It is time. 300. 300. To make sure that we oh. get it. Thank you so much. How big is it? Thanks, guys. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs>